Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, and grab your ranch dressing, because I heard the spoilers are extra spicy today. There's a lot of buzz going on around them, but uh, as is the norm, I haven't looked at any of them yet, because you gotta get my first impression. Also, I hit my head really hard today, so if I completely misinterpret something, I'm not operating at 100%. In fact, it feels like I'm still bleeding. So anyway, first up we got Rail Storm Conduit, because we just needed another Rail, and we needed to improve Is It Drake's even more. And this is a 4 for 4, which is doable in, uh, Is It Drake's. His passive is basically Niv-Mizzet. It's whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, he deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. And obviously that's a lot easier to pull off than a card draw, which is what Niv-Mizzet does. Also, he's faster and earlier and easier to cast. So his plus two, which you would almost always use because you just spent all your mana on casting him, uh, that'll bring him up to six total loyalty, and it's just scry one, which, I mean, yeah, repetitive recurring scry is pretty good, but whatever. And then his negative two is where there's a problem, because then from then on, you could just negative two him three times in a row, which is completely unacceptable. So whenever you cast your next incident sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So right off the bat, because he exists, two damage. And that's coming from him. Then, okay, you get two lightning strikes for one card. And you guys know that, um, you know, mono red with splash blue or full-blown drakes, either one can just sit there and just toss stuff out. I mean, you wouldn't want to let somebody clone Chemister's Insight or anything similar to it, really. Even opt would be a little excessive because now the card advantage is so ridiculous and then you could still negative to him again the next turn. I mean, to make this deck an appropriate power level that this guy would go in, they're probably going to have to ban three cards minimum. I mean, we're looking at something just unstoppable. I mean, the level of counterspells control and sideboard fixes in the deck already is completely ridiculous. So this card really pisses me off. Uh, next, Bolt Bend, because we needed more Ral. Now this is interesting. He seems to be attacking one of the Amon Ked invaders, but he was supposed to be on Bolas' side. Interesting. So I'm going to read the flavor text first. I'm actually interested. Give them everything you've got and some things you don't. So uh, I don't know. It looks like he's fighting one of Bolas' forces. So maybe all 10 guilds turn against Bolas. I don't know. I'm acting like I don't know exactly precisely what happens when... It was already spoiled, like quite a while ago with a vision of the future. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it here in case you didn't read it. I think I very much glossed over it in my silly version of the lore and the storyline. But yeah, they already said how this ends uh, pretty much, I'll say. And the big giant twist that's yet to be revealed uh, during one of Nissa's visions in, I believe it was Amon Ked, it would have to be the one that had her using green mana, I think. Yeah, that was Amon. Well, it's our probably. One of the two, whatever. Yeah, they already said what's going to happen. Let's just say a special guest shows up to fight Bolas, and it isn't Ugin. I mean, he does too, but... I'll save that for a different video, but yeah, it looks like uh, at least the Izzet Guild turns against the forces that are invading, so that, that'll be nice. So this is a four-cost instant, and this spell costs... Oh, here we go. Three less to cast if you control a creature with power four or greater, which, I mean, yeah, Drake's, obviously... And uh, let's see, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Okay, that is purely a blue effect. It's called redirect. Correct me if I'm wrong, but red has never been able to do that. That's taking magic and altering it. That's what blue does. They're even taunting everybody by making the entire artwork blue because they know damn well that this is a blue ability. And yeah, ooh, it's Rail and it's Is It and they do blue stuff. Cool. I don't see blue in the cost anywhere. This is just a crappy overpriced redirect that you can only play under certain circumstances and they think that all those limitations make it okay. No, nothing is okay about this. Since blue redirecting is one of my favorite effects ever in the entire game, I'm very familiar with how this works. So let me just outline it for you. You can change the target of a counter spell to itself. So in other words, this is a one cost red counter spell. Universal too. It can counter any counter spell. You can change the target of a planeswalker ability. You can change the target of any spell of any kind. You can do an ETB effect and change it. It could be a triggered ability, an activated ability. Like I said, a planeswalker ability. You could change the target of any of that. This is way too good of a card to give Is It Drakes. Way, 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 way out of control. Way too good. It only works when a drake is out, which is the only time, coincidentally, that I want to blow up a drake. Imagine that. And now I can't because they're going to redirect it at one of my creatures. Great. This affects Ixalan's Binding, Vraska's Contempt, um, Vraska herself, the Planeswalker. I mean, this card is ridiculous. 
utterly ridiculous. It's a disgrace to the game. Oh my gosh, I don't even care what's up next, but let's keep going. Oh good, it's Izzet again. Rails Outburst, great. What does he do this time? For four, an instant deals three damage to any target. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Cool, because they needed more damage and draw. At least it's cost four, which puts it completely out of the reach of anybody who would ever play this. Any deck, I should say. Next up, Parhelion 2. I don't know what Parhelion 1 was, so okay. Uh, it's a 5-5, 8-cost legendary artifact vehicle. If I remember correctly, Parhelion basically means, like, construct that holds the sun or something about a circled... I don't know. It's probably the Immortal Sunmobile. So, uh, Flying First Strike Vigilance. Uh, whenever it attacks, create two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with Flying and Vigilance that are attacking Crew 4. Wow, this costs 8, and nobody's going to play it, so that's good, but... This is out of control bonkers stupid. Oh man, I just love stuff where you attack once with it and the game's over. It's so fair. I hope every time anybody tries to pull this BS off and gets away with it, somebody hits settle the wreckage on him. So next up, the planeswalker that everybody thought was Elspeth but isn't, Kazmina, Enigmatic Mentor. And uh, I have never heard of her. I don't think she's ever been in the lore before. Maybe she was, I don't know. Uh, but she's a five for... Uh, four and she's blue and jace was a complete waste of a card and he's the only i think mono blue one we've had so far maybe cure i don't remember she's probably mixed uh so hopefully she doesn't mill crap because i'm already super done with that uh let's see spells your opponent's cast that target a, a creature or planeswalker you control ca cost two more to cast cool pseudo semi hex proof i've been wanting an effect like that forever and since she's the lowest tier Planeswalker at uh, Uncommon Rarity, she only gets a negative, but it's negative two, and she starts with five, so that's cool. Uh, create a 2-2 two, two blue wizard creature token, draw a card, then discard a card. So, I mean, okay, it's kind of neat for blue, but it's nothing too special. That effect, though, is pretty damn good. Doesn't do crap to save your creatures, though, so I don't know. I don't know how good she'll be. She could be outrageously good or totally not played at all. I could see it going either way. Next up, we got something in Russian. Uh, allegedly, it says Convoke the Winged. Unsurprisingly, doesn't have Convoke. So it is a two-cost uh, white instant. That is a lot of letters and words for instant. I bet it translates to really super-duper fast spell thingy. I mean, that, that feels like about enough letters. So you untap all creatures you control, and then all creatures you control with flying get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So you could build a swing away deck. Maybe we'll finally see the... Uh, afterlife uh three color black blue white like token spirit thing that everybody was talking about before uh, uh the last release that never materialized everybody's still talking about an all angels deck because i think we got some better angels now i think or some supporting cards or something well remember we still have favorable wins and i've seen people play just blue white uh kind of duck and cover but it's more like flood and cover it's all flyers with boost but then like enough control to stop people from just nuking the whole line yeah it might turn into something uh next up we got kazmina's transmutation absolute first pick in a draft uh if you're drafting blue i should say because this is pretty damn good for blue so it's a two cost enchantment aura enchant creature and it loses all abilities and has base power and toughness one one so basically it's gone it's pretty much a two cost non-double blue removal for a creature that is insane i mean you drop this on niv mizzet yeah i don't think that they care that they technically have a one one next up feather the redeemed really they named an angel feather <laughs> okay so this is a double white red which there seems to be some cycle of We'll just say stupidly costed cards that aren't as good as their cost would suggest. There's at least five of them. Uh, anyway, this is a 3-4 legendary creature, Angel, with flying for three, which is already pretty good. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Oh. My. God. I can name about 20 spells that are standard legal that would be problematic with this thing. This is absolutely ridiculous. Now, it's only stuff that targets a creature you control. I assume one or more. But it's like automatic recurring rebound. Uh, it, but it goes infinite. I mean, that's... What the hell were they thinking with this entire set, let alone this card? Thankfully, Heroic Reinforcements isn't qualified, or they would have to ban one of the two. 
But yeah, even just plus two, plus two, and gain one life for every attacker, game's over. So next up, Solar Blaze. Oh boy, I wonder if... Oh, the Parhelion is... Um, I knew it sounded familiar besides just Latin. Um, it's the name of Boros's headquarters, I'm pretty sure. I just got that. Anyway, um, I guess they're going to take off in their little Boros UFO and go fry people. Cool. Uh, so... Uh, it's a four cost sorcery called Solar Blaze, and each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So it's uh, Judgment Strike times Infinity. Um, that includes your creatures, though. So, hmm. Boros uses creatures, and virtually all of them have attack power higher than their toughness. So, this is a problem. I don't think this is going to be terrifically heavily played i mean it's not even a reliable board wipe it is two colored it is sorcery speed but it does cost four though which is a really cheap board wipe i just can't name one deck this will go in but boy if somebody finds a use for this holy crap by the way fyi little safety tip here if the opponent's creatures that you're hitting with this have lifelink they get the lifelink Somebody used Justice Strike on Arena on my uh, Lyra, the 5-5 five, five lifelinking angel, and they acted all surprised. They're like, what happened? <laughs> well, surprise, princess. Uh, next up, Turret Ogre. Uh, it's a 4-3 four, for 4 with reach. Cool, we need more reachers. And uh, when Turret Ogre enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with power 4 or greater, tur Turret Ogre deals 2 damage to each opponent. Um, that's just kind of dumb. I mean, Warrior Tribal, ooh, that's super a thing, not... This is pretty much just filler. You wouldn't even play this in Red Rush. Uh, next up, Steady Aim. Uh, it's a two-cost screen instant. Untapped target creature. It gains plus one, plus four, and gains reach until end of turn. Um, I mean, yeah, for two, that's not bad. You just intercept a flyer and then hopefully kill it. The funny thing is people constantly misinterpret cards like this. You can block a ground creature just fine with this. You can ambush anything. You can swing away with your 5-5. Five, five, and when they respond by swinging with their 3-3, three, three, boom, untap it, intercept it, kill it. This is basically a two-cost ambush and kill in the middle of combat. Do not underestimate that. Next up, Shriek Diver. It's a 2-1 for 3, and it looks like it's one of Bolus' forces. Well, of course it's a zombie bird warrior, so of course it is. Uh, it has flying, obviously, and if you pay one, it gains haste until end of turn. Wow, that's really narrowly useful, and it's only a 2-1 flyer for 3. That is just not good. Now, in a boosted zombie tribal, this could be a finisher, though. So, you know, but on the surface, it's not a good card. Next up, Forced Landing. It's another 2 cost green instant. Put target creature with flying on the bottom of its owner's library. Ouch. Ouch. Kiss Plummet Goodbye. This is the new, better version of Plummet. This hits Indestructible. This hits, uh, I guess not Hexproof. Boy, what else would it be? I don't know. This just nukes a flyer. Just absolutely nukes them. Boy, this might actually be a kind of expensive common, like flirting with, ooh, 60 cents. But still, this is the best two-cost instant speed green anti-flying card I've ever seen. Next up, oh, good, it's demolished, because we needed that. Thanks. It's a sorcery four-cost land destruction, but it can also hit an artifact. But it won't, because people are going to destroy land with it. Great, awesome, thanks. Screw land destruction. Next up, we got Roll Escape Hex Hybrid. This is already leaked, so just wanted to confirm. Yeah, here it is. It wasn't fake. Cool. Overpowered is all hell, too, by the way. Uh, then we got Eternal Skylord. It's a 3 3 for 5 zombie wizard. When it enters the battlefield, amass 2, which is one of the few ways to actually get two zombie tokens, uh, zombie army creature tokens. But wait, there's more zombie tokens you control have flying. That's pretty significant. Now, yeah, he costs 5. Uh, but I mean, he's not even dual color and that a mass deck is obviously intended to be three color. Doesn't have to be, but that's the way they appear to have designed it. I think a mass is going absolutely nowhere fast, but, uh, I mean, zombie subtype tokens have flying. Like somebody might put this in something. The problem is it's not black. So next up we got Sunblade Angel. It's a six cost three, three with flying first strike vigilance and lifelink. Sorry, Lyra is still better. I mean, this has everything. I would absolutely drop it into a Boros colored, but not Boros heavy, um, every aura, every enchantment do something deck. Because, I mean, yeah, this creature doesn't directly, um, you know, have like a for every aura attached to this do this, but like, but come on, you drop a boosting aura onto this thing and my gosh, you're going to get some mileage out of that. 
And finally, we've got some lands. So we got planes where Ravnica's on fire. That's lovely. Uh, and those look like, let's see, let me zoom in on this. Yeah, those look like entire armies of those blue zombies, like formed up into ranks or legions or whatever. Could just be really ugly roofs. I don't know. Then we got an island, which I don't know. This is some Sim City stuff. I don't know what that is. Um, that looks like a symbol from the Immortal Sun, maybe. So maybe this is Bolus's Citadel. I don't know. It's in Bolus colors. It could be a weapon they're using against Nicol Bolus. I don't know. It could be the Planeswalker Beacon itself, too, which I think is it built for him. I think that's the running storyline. Uh, then we got a swamp. Um, not 100% sure what's going on there because the, the art isn't terrifically consistent with uh, sparks getting stolen, but I think that's supposed to be what's happening. Next up, we got a mountain. Um, I don't know. Looks like a dust storm, actually. That's kind of weird. And then some kind of, is it lightning tower and some birds, maybe? I don't know. Not very telling that one. And then we've got a forest where uh, nothing's happening. Maybe it's pre-attack. Maybe it's post-attack. Oh, I just realized one building is like smoking, I think. Okay. And that is it for today. So I think up until now, the totally broken, obnoxious cards that right off the bat should be banned. I think the count was like three. Uh, now it's at least five, if not six. So, oh, I'm so excited about this set and can't wait to see how badly it ruins standard. Is it Drake's is about to be one of the number one decks in the world again, obviously. I would say without Arclight. I don't think that those decks are suited towards uh, Arclight summoning. So, um, pretty spicy cards. Nothing really seems to have progressed the story that far. I'm sure we're in like act three by now, but I can't really name anything that happened other than, oh, look, this person showed up. Oh, look, they're in the storyline now. Well, yeah, they live there. They live in Ravnica. So, yep. Shocking revelation. Anyway, watch for my next video that I'm uploading tonight. It is hilarious it's completely off topic but it is probably one of the funniest videos i've ever made it, it's just this random thing that happened and i decided to pick up a camera and film it and my gosh this is like bob saget would be proud if i sent this to him that's a 90s kid reference so thanks for watching don't forget to check back later on this channel or better yet just hit subscribe and i'll see you guys next video